Hello, William here again. Now, casting our minds back to uh, September last year, I produced uh, a few special uh, best boat blanks um, for demonstrating Yorkshire Grit and Yorkshire Grit Microfine at Yandel's show. Now, to specifically uh, demonstrate the excellent attributes of Yorkshire Grit Microfine, I produced um, a stabilised um, Burr Elm spindle and I had an attempt at casting a resin um, Burr Elm hybrid sphere which to be honest didn't turn out very well. Um, it didn't turn out very well because uh, firstly my problem was that the um, block of Burr Elm I put into the mould shifted away from one side so I ended up with a peculiar eye um, looking uh, sphere. Um, I also added in some aluminium powder in the hope it might make it a little bit glittery but it didn't. It made it very cloudy and dull. Now for any of you that have purchased resin and its associated uh, equipment you'll know that it's not cheap and therefore probably like me you're reluctant to throw something away. So for this week's video I'm going to try and recover um, this piece and turn it into some artistic object, uh, nothing of practical use. So the concept is I'm going to um, remount the uh, sphere back on the lathe, I'm going to finish it and give it a good polishing and then uh, mount it on a short stand um, for which I found this interesting piece of you. Now I'm not the first person to attempt uh, such things uh, at all. Uh, Mike Walt recently produced a sphere using um, the Paul Howard um, sphere jig uh, out of you and also I believe that um, John Clothier and almost certainly uh, Jim Overton have produced uh, similar things. Okay, to start off, I need to mount this uh, back in the lathe, remove these two uh, spindles, and complete the sphere. Now, there's a couple of ways of uh, mounting the sphere in the lathe. Uh, first of all, uh, easiest is a vacuum chuck. Uh, and in fact, I've got one of those, but I discovered today that I'm in fact missing a hose adapter, so I can't use it until it arrives. Okay, the other way of um, holding this in place on the lathe is using a uh, cup chuck at the headstock end and another cup, cup chuck mounted on the arbor in the tailstock. Now I do have a cup chuck arbor um, which I got from Paul Howard um, and I need to make a cup to fit over the end of it. Um, so this sphere is about 130 millimeters in um, diameter so the cup I think needs to be about 30% of the size so we're looking at about 43 mil. Okay I have a piece of scrap ash here from my scrap box and the first thing I need to do is to make a 35 millimeter diameter recess for the cup arbor. Also there needs to be a further intrusion of a 23 a millimeter diameter hole uh, by four millimeters deep to accommodate the um, arbor bearing and the circlip. Okay having completed the recesses for the arbor we now need to make the cup the correct profile for uh, the size of sphere that we're going to use it for. Now, Paul Howard very thoughtfully um, provides a number of O-rings um, to use with this arbor, uh, obviously to protect your piece. Now, these O-rings would normally, uh, of course, be uh, glued into place um, in the groove on the end of the cup. Now, very recently, I came across a product called Sugru which I can best describe as a, uh, a mix of superglue and plasticine. Now I purchased some Sugru to repair some um, frayed 
connectors between my camera and the USB cable. Now when Sugru cures, which takes about 24 hours, what you're left with is a fairly firm silicon rubber. So it occurred to me that I could use Sugru on the end of the cup instead of the o-ring seals. Sugru is very easy to mould with the hands, it doesn't have any um, nasty smell. Um, the only downside is that it does take 24 hours to cure fully. So I'm just going to mould it around the edge of the cup here, pushing it down into the uh, recess I made with a parting tool. Okay, so uh, you'll have noticed that it's a little bit fiddly to get the sphere straight um, running true between the two cups and also note that I have the two spigots off-centered. At some point, uh, just before now, I realised that using the vacuum um, chuck was probably not a good idea, and in fact using it this way could probably damage it. It's not something I would do again. Uh, in the future I will make a wooden cup chuck. Okay, after about uh, 12 to 15 minutes of uh, abrasive work and then Yorkshire grit and Yorkshire grit microfine, I think I've got a respectable finish on this. Now I'm not quite sure um, what to use as a finish or in fact if it needs one, so I'll have to do a bit of research and uh, finish that off later. So moving on then to the base, as I previously mentioned, uh, I have this piece of U which I found in my wood pile. So the first thing to do is to get it on the bandsaw and get the base reasonably square.
Okay, now I've got it mounted between the centers. The first thing to do is to remove any loose pieces of bark so they don't hit me in the face. Okay, now that's done, I'm just going to use my spindle roughing gauge just to even off the surface and to make the basic shape. Now this piece of U is uh, quite shaky, it's got quite a few uh, linear cracks in it and these will need to be filled with some uh, CA glue and sawdust as I go along. Okay, here you can see I've put some yellow masking tape on the wings of the uh, piece uh, to make it easier to see and reduce the chances of a catch. Now, I don't have a centre steady, uh, which would have been ideal for a piece like this, and you will notice that at least on two occasions I've had to remount the piece because it's moved in the Colossus jaws. To reduce the uh, chances of the piece departing the lathe, as you can see I'm taking a lot of very slow, small cuts. Okay, I'm just going to use the props on here for a little while to profile the uh, edges here to get rid of the burrs and I'm using a 240 grit roll lock pad. Just going through the grids here from 120 to 240. OK, 
Okay, going to give this piece uh, two coats of sanding sealer. The first coat will be pre-thinned with cellulose thinners and the second coat will be full strength. And I'll denib between the two coats using 3M scotch pad. just buffing out the recess for the sphere here uh, and I do think I forgot to mention that I've left a, a raised ring at the bottom in the hope that the sphere will freely turn uh, in the recess. Now I'm going to part this uh, tenon off uh, on the bandsaw because I don't have that much uh, wood uh, to play with and can't safely do it on the lathe. And finally here, just sanding off the base of the stand uh, before I give it a coat of sanding sealer. Okay, so there we have it. Cold hearted orb. And if you're a Moody Blues fan, then you'll understand why I called it this. It's not pretty. It's not practical. But I did salvage the uh, Burr Elm and resin hybrid ball that I messed up some time ago. Um, and I think as I mentioned right at the beginning of this project, uh, it was totally inspired by Mike Waltz um, Oak Sphere and Sapili stand that he uh, produced just before Christmas last year. Now, um, for me at least, the use of Sugru on this project was the first, and in fact I haven't seen anybody else use it. And it was a very good alternative, uh, an easy alternative to using O-ring seals in um, cup chucks. Now, uh, out of curiosity, I did have a go at machining this on the lathe after the project, which wasn't very successful. Uh, however, I do believe uh, if it was thicker, you could certainly um, machine it um, fairly successfully. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I am going to leave at Resin Spheres to um, the experts such as uh, Jim Overton and John Clothier.